All right, so we've got um, a lot of progress today. Uh, mainly I've been working on the whole texturing issue with uh, the UFO. Let's see if I can bring the UFO back up. There we go. Uh, I was having a lot, of, a lot of issues where things look choppy. And uh, textures were sideways. There, there were a lot of issues all together. It was just a mess of them. And part of the, what I worked on was the alignment maps here. So the alignment maps go up to, uh, they can go up pretty high resolution. Uh, let me reset the rotation. So if you go to Second Life viewers, you can only upload a maximum of 1024 by 1024 pixel wide and high image whereas this allows me to go up to 4096 I can go higher if I want to but this was enough to get really fine grained detail to diagnose what was going on with my textures uh, the main thing that that led to was um, down sampling so right in, at the beginning of the day, I was reading every other pixel. So I was reading the, the odd, odd numbered pixels, discarding the even number pixels, except for the pixel on the right. I was actually using that to figure out how to wrap around to the other side of the model. Well, that was good, except for my larger models were the only ones having the texture issues. And I researched a little bit about it, and I found out that I needed to downsample my image in, in a way of which vertices I pick from for the larger image. So instead of skipping every other pixel and using that for my vertice, I only, I, I only had to pick out one out of every four pixels for my vertices for 128 by 128 image, one out of every eight vertices for 256 by 256 image, and one out of every 16 pixels for 256 by 256 sized image. So you'll see down here, I, I've started writing out that that there's the number of times I have had to downsample the horizontal or the vertical segments. Uh, and the way I figured that out is I multiply the uh, horizontal and the vertical segment count. And if it's greater than 1024, then I need to iterate through, divide it by half, and downsample until the two numbers are within that 1024 or less. Uh, not all have both the horizontal and vertical down sampled. Some are just horizontal, some are just vertical. Uh, just because some of the, the sculpted textures are wider or they're narrow, narrow, they're not all square. Uh, the whole down sampling is because you don't want the client viewer to be resource hungry trying to render a mesh for every sculpted prim so sculpted prims are just they, they keep within 1024 vertices all right so the other thing i found out you'll see this weird banding line going down this is my biggest problem right now and then this weird uh wrapping here and let me go to 256 so you can see how the they have little I don't know what you call that they're just curving at the edge and then the banding the the band is actually right on the last quad of each row so if I turn on the control vertices you can see there it's exactly in between that that last quad before it wraps around the a3 and if I, I don't know if I can really zoom in, but what I figured out was that this last 
quad is actually going from the end of the texture back to the beginning of the texture in reverse. So that's just a weird thing. I've been working with the UV mapping, trying to make sure I have the correct settings on that. I've worked with the faces on the geometry to make sure that the poles are only adding one face for each quad instead of two, since they all map to this center um, vertex. There's only one vertex there instead of a ton of vertex. So I'm just trying different things out and I'm not really getting too far <laughs> right now. Um, some of the things I've worked on were, were the camera angles. So the right, left, top, bottom are correct now. The front and back are correct. I also worked on the uh, my little cube here in, in terms of working with the camera angles to make sure that they were correct. But I also textured the cube so I could actually see where I'm looking. So back, top, bottom, front. I also address issues where the aspect ratio was actually uh, making the, the cube take off the full width. So it was a very wide cube when looking at the front. And then the bottom was also wide. It, it was just, there were so many things I worked on with cameras and, uh, oh, camera controls as well. So the camera controls were messed up on the cameras when I, when I changed between each view and I got those set up so that um, the problem was I was adding the camera controls or the orbit controls before I changed the camera position and where it was looking at. So the orbit controls were not aware that the camera's orientation had changed. Uh, well, what else? The, um, the, the, um, oh, I know. Why is texture none? Where's my UFO? Something's not right. What's going on? There, there's my UFO. Got to figure out why, what just happened there. Um, yeah, so the UFO is upside down. And that confused me. I thought I did something wrong. I finally went into Second Life Viewer, created a new object, and applied the UFO sculpting map, and found out that the UFO renders upside down in the world as of Second Life as well. So this is actually the correct orientation for the geometry in this sculpt map over here. The other issue I ran into was the UFO maps appear to be sideways. They're at a 90 degree angle. And again, I went into the Second Life viewer, applied a texture to the UFO and found that by default, the texture was on its side. So it, I'm happy to see that the issues I'm seeing are the same issues in the viewer. Although this, this banding here is really the thing that's really getting on my nerves. I don't know what's, why this is happening. Uh, I would upload it to the Second Life client, but I feel like it's pointless since uh, I have never had a problem with the textures in the Second Life client doing having the same banding issues. And then here we go to the uh, the south pole. The south pole looks fine. There's no twistiness. It gets a bit garbled, but that's that's fine. Um, yeah. All right. So I think I'm gonna leave with that. There we go.